Welcome back. We are, if you remember, sorting out the meaning of one of the more famous Zen koans. The koan was, the perceiver cannot perceive. And I showed you last time how the visual system is thought to work. It was quite clear that there was a perceiver and it could perceive. Let's just uh, review that before we go on to find out what the meaning of the koan actually is. You remember that the way uh, we see is because in classical physics and in our current view is that the brain produces consciousness. You have the excitation of the brain on the left and the light from the eye comes in, goes through the optic nerve into the activated cortex and you see. So there is a perceiver. In fact, it's a little more complex than that because you can see the cats, which are the object. The light goes from the cats through the optic nerves into the visual cortex. You have structures within the temporal lobe which monitor shape uh, and also you, they, you have the relationship to emotion. And then a form is sorted out by the parietal lobe. So this then is a very short view of the visual system. And this model is the model of duality with a perceiver who is looking at an object which is the perceived. Now what we saw from the last slide in fact is that those kittens are in his brain and he projects them out. So in fact in one sense the perceiver and the perceived object are the same but uh, in fact we always think of it using this model of duality as two things, perceiver and perceived. Now I want to go just sum that up by going through this slide. The perceiver sees themselves as separate, and you agree with that. You don't see yourself as the world, you see yourself as separate from the world. It's centered in the ego, and the thoughts and feelings which are related to it. It has time past, time present, and future time. Now, if you think about what's going on in your mind, I hope you'll agree with me that those three times are present. Now, the disadvantage of using duality is that this is always tied up with an egoic story of some sort. And the ego is never satisfied. So this leads to a lot of suffering in our life. If only I'd done that, if only so-and-so had come, if only, if only, if only. And that is duality. So the koan has no answer within classical physics. In quantum physics, it's quite different because awareness uh, or consciousness, I use those as synonyms, arises from the quantum background. The brain acts as a filter and consciousness is in fact reduced. So the full experience of creation is then available if you can get rid of the filter in the brain. So there's the brain with its circuits and um, then uh, by training, meditation is one of the ways you can in fact move towards non-duality. But every esoteric teaching tells us, school really, tells us that enlightenment is a gift and enlightenment uh, is given to you although as some teachers now say, meditation makes you more accident prone or more enlightenment prone. And when non-duality comes, then all the filters or a great number of them are removed and you see the non-dual world. 
Now, I would recommend that you go to the net and look at Rupert Spicer, because Rupert, in my view, is non-dual, and I've asked him and he agrees that he is non-dual. In non-duality, and watch this one very carefully, in non-duality, the perceiver and the perceived are one. Is that not our koan? Is that not uh, what we want? Koan says the perceiver cannot perceive. Well, how can he perceive if he is the perceived? Do you understand? So, in non-duality, the perceiver and the perceived are one. And awareness, which is the consciousness that we're working with, arises from the stillness of the cosmic background. That's what Rupert Spira says. And Rupert talks about the genesis of awareness. So he's talking about the genesis or consciousness of the actual moment in time. And please note, there is no past and no future. There is only the present moment. And also please note, that the cosmic background generates the moment which uh, is then experienced. So it's something like this. Here's the cosmic mind. There is stillness, which is right down at the bottom level by the quantum vacuum. And from this arises awareness and Rupert and other masters say that awareness is linked with love. And this is the present moment. And this, then, is what you sense in your brain if it's clean. Now, just to give you a feel for this, um, it has been commonly assumed that psychedelics work by increasing neural activity. But it turns out that psilocybin actually reduced blood flow and neural activity in several brain regions. And that subjects in which these regions were most inhibited tended to report the most intense hallucinatory experiences in the, ex yeah, in the experiment. So what we're learning now is that it looks as if uh, psychedelics, in fact, remove the, th the filters so you get a much wider view of reality. Here's an MRI scan uh, and what it's shown is the areas of reduced activity in the brain when you take it and in fact these are the nodes of the default system. The default system equates with the egoic structures so that is taking the egoic structures away. So we now have non-duality uh, with no perceiver. The ego function are gone. Time is the present. And you are given, there's no perception in that sense, you're given the fully structured moment which manifests with no perceiver. So in non-duality, you are the moment, and it's a fuller awareness of the present moment. Well, there we are. Now we can understand the Cohen. The perceiver cannot perceive. This means that they are in a non-dual state of consciousness, what used to be called enlightenment. So, really, working on this Cohen and understanding it means that you understand what enlightenment is. So we've got really three quarters of the way through working with this koan. We've got one stage more and that is that I'm going to quote to you in the next video what the world is like and what the wider experiences are like once you are in non-dual consciousness. So See you in a week.